Literally. In a land of likes, leggings, and lattes, comes a podcast hosted by two basic beings, Becca and Maddie. This is The Basic Bee Podcast. As you may have noticed, if you're watching this on YouTube, we are sitting with a special guest. Um, His name is Danny. Um, He is an owner of a coffee shop. He has coached competitive cheerleading. Mm -hmm. He has worked at the Border Patrol, Mm -hmm. and he's also a pastor. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell a little bit about yourself? (laughs) (laughs) That was quite a bit. Um, Let's see. I am... uh, Married, 20 years. Wow. 20 years this year. And I have uh, three kids, 16, a junior, now a junior. Uh, I got to get this all straight because they're so close. A sophomore and a eighth grader. Oh, I'm a boy and two girls. Oh my gosh. In that order. Yeah. Are you doing anything for your 20th special or? Um, so it was, it was May. And so my May's cr- packed. Yeah. So my wife's birthday, Mother's Day. An anniversary, all in that, and so we sort of, I sort of combined things together at some point, mm-hmm. you know, because it's just a lot. And we ended up going. Have you ever heard of the Ironworks Hotel? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I never to, heard of it. I worked at Ruth's Chris for. Did a couple you work years. at that one right there? Yep, I worked okay. there for like two years. Yeah, so we stayed the night at Ruth's. No, stayed the night at Ironworks. <laughs> at Ruth's Chris. At Ironworks, and then went to Ruth's Chris for dinner. Oh, really? Yeah. That's yeah. cool. And we had this waiter. His name was Bill. And he was oh, awesome. I don't remember any bills. Oh, he was great. He was great. He, we ended up getting a free dessert out of it, and we said we didn't want dessert because we were mm-hmm. going to go where it was mm-hmm. a little bit cheaper. Mm-hmm. My wife wanted cheesecake, and then they ended up, they brought us two desserts. Oh, yeah. they go the brought, extra mile. They brought a little one because, you know, you tell them that's your anniversary or something like that because uh-huh. we've been there before. And they brought out this little one, mm-hmm. and then we were like, got the bill, and we told them we didn't want any dessert. And then next thing you know, it brings out this big plate with like this huge, like, Chocolate mousse peanut butter thing, Ooh, and then I, a I huge love that one. Cheese, cheesecake. Well, and my wife said it was the best cheesecake she ever had. Ruth's Chris is the reason that I have phenomenal customer service, oh, yeah. as you may have noticed. Mm-hmm. So I know Danny <laughs> yeah, because I, I know Danny because of Bova Conti, which is the coffee shop mm-hmm. I work at. But um, he also owns his own coffee shop, so maybe you could talk briefly about that and okay. why you are at mm-hmm. Bova Conti. So, as everybody knows, there was a pandemic, mm-hmm. and when you open up a business, you don't put that into your budget to plan no. for a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, like most businesses, we ended up shutting down in March of 2020, and our situation was a little unique because our our business, our shop is not in like a retail boutique. Mm-hmm. You know, a bunch of restaurants and everything is in an office building. And then they're all tech. And so they all work from home. And so that's what they've been doing for over the past year. So the building has been pretty much a ghost town. But in the meantime, they started building a new building right next door to us, mm-hmm. the same owners. Mm-hmm. Um, so they built that. So now everybody's starting to come back and plus more. So it's been sort of, it's been good because there's a lot of things that are happening that mm-hmm. actually uh, roasting. We're going to be doing that. Mm-hmm. Just heard it here. Drywalls will be roasting their own beans. <laughs> Any Indian announcement Apples right people. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to be roasting our own beans. And then there's another development that may be happening. I'm going to not say anything about that, but something else. Announcement to come. Announcement yes. to come. So, okay. come. Yeah. So we're going to talk more about your coffee stuff. But first, the tradition of the podcast is to talk about our recent obsessions. <laughs> okay. So maybe Becca could go first. And then yes, you can think do. about yours. Yeah, make me last, please. So I'm still binging the crown. And that's been exhausting. Do you know what that is? That's, no. It's a, it's a Netflix series about Queen okay. Elizabeth's life. Oh. But it's I'm highly sure you dramatized. Love it. okay. I'm kidding. I don't is know. It, like, <laughs> it's, is, it's, is it history, like documentary type, or it's just like a... Kind of, so. but they dramatize oh, okay. it. Like So it's actual events that happen to her. And I'm finally on where Princess Diana comes okay. into the scene. Mm-hmm. And I thought I'd be more excited about it, but I'm not. Because <laughs> it's like actually like giving me a really bad view of the royal family. Oh. Because like oh. they're showing like Meghan Diana. Markle didn't already do that. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. right? No, uh, <laughs> Diana, she apparently struggled with an eating disorder. Oh, and I didn't know, know that. that. I didn't know that either. Oh. And then, like, I guess 
Prince Charles, uh, Queen Elizabeth's son, Mm -hmm. wanted to get married to his now wife, like, 20 years ago, you know, or whenever he met her. And then they said no. And that's why Diana she, they died. forced her to marry some other dude. Mm-hmm. And then he got Diana and he didn't really like her. Like his proposal, he didn't bend down on one knee. Mm-hmm. He just kind of was like, will you marry me? No ring. So she got to go pick out her ring from the royal family's jewels. <laughs> and yeah, so I learned that. And, okay. uh, and yeah, he like did not like her at all. Oh, so, Tough. so yeah, that's still your obsession. Yeah, it's, I don't know if I call it an obsession because now I'm just kind of like... Mm-hmm. You don't feel great about it. I don't feel great about it, but yeah, I think that's like what I've been doing. Okay. Time. And school, of course, has always forced to be my obsession. She's getting her master's in HR. Oh, yes, my so. wife's getting her master's too. So oh, is she getting her master's in? To be a uh, administrator. Oh, gotcha. yeah, in educational. Where's she go? Yeah. She's goes to Butler. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I go to Indiana Wesleyan. Okay. So. All right. I yeah. Woo, I woo. I yeah. Woo. Exactly. I woo. <laughs> I, know I, some, woo. I knew some people from my cheerleaders. Oh. Yeah. Oh. We're gonna talk about yeah. some cheerleaders yeah. soon, including yourself. No <laughs> but um, I guess my recent obs- obsession was, it is currently like Al Capone and the mafia. Because I went to Chicago and we did a Ghosts and Gangsters tour. So I've been learning about Al Capone. Oh. And it's very interesting because oh, okay. I guess he was actually from New York. Long story short, he moved to Chicago and then Prohibition started. But yeah, I've been really, really interested in him. Were you ever forced to read Al Capone Does My Shirts? Have you ever heard of that book? No. What? No. It's called Al Capone Does My Shirts. What's that mean? <laughs> it Like, it's a... I don't know. I don't remember. I read it in school. We were forced to. And, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. And um, it's about, I guess, this kid that lives on the island. Like, because Al Capone was in Alcatraz, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was. Yeah. And I'm not there yet. And yeah. so his yeah. dad mm-hmm. was like a guard. So he lived he on the island. Do. And I guess he, Al Capone did his laundry. What? In the book. That is, or something. That is I, interesting. I've, it's been like... 15 huh. years since I read the book. You're going to like that. So My coworker Brittany, um, told me today that her boyfriend's great-grandma babysat Al Capone's kids. Really? Because I think he had homes yeah. up in northern Indiana. Interesting. So, he anyway. He had kids that he didn't even know. Probably. probably. <laughs> okay, what's your recent obsession? I had to think. I was thinking food. Pistachios popped in my head. But that's not an obsession as much as Lord of the Rings. Oh, really? I have really fallen down a rabbit hole the last couple of years. With okay. It. Yeah. So now I'm like reading the history of Middle Earth. Interesting. It's crazy. It's like, God, did I say 15,000 or 30,000 pages or something like that? Oh, my god! It's like three volumes of books like that thick. My yeah. boyfriend has a like map of Middle Earth in his apartment. Me and Adam got to talk. <laughs> yeah. We got to talk. Are you serious? I can contribute nothing to that conversation. What? But I didn't even realize that was Lord of the Rings until just now. <laughs> oh, we got more to talk about. Yeah. We had a great conversation the other day. We got okay, more good. to talk about. Tell him to come in. We can sit. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> He's got a map. That's awesome. Well, yeah. that's, uh, it's actually like a tapestry slash blanket thing, but you would like it. Yeah, I would. Okay, so I guess we should go. Let me think. Okay, so. Before we get to talking about your coffee shop, Mm -hmm. I thought it would be fun to make you taste test coffee. Okay. So. That's what that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go ahead and get those over here, I'll tell you, we have your favorite Starbucks. Burger King. I'm, oh. Boba Conti. Okay. And Speedway. Okay. So let me, Speedway, I can tell you which one that, like, you know, I saw somebody do this before too, and they utterly failed. Well, there's no pressure because I did get this like an hour or so ago. But so we it's did not warm, good coffee. We did warm it up. So you might want to give it a little stir. But yeah, you think it's still hot? Yeah, we warmed okay. it in the microwave. She warmed it up, okay. so Learn it's still warm. Coffee fact. Microwave and coffee actually takes the flavor out of it. Oh, oh! But well, no, it's, not, these are going to be even it's, less it should flavorful. Be all right. It's all right. All right. Imagine so, how good of a barista. So I just set the mug on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you think it or is. you can, however you want to do it. So I you can microwave coffee. That's okay. Okay. You what? I microwave coffee too. Coming from a coffee shop owner. I know. You should be ashamed. I know. But you know it takes the flavor sometimes out. Just, so you at least have yes. the knowledge. You're sometimes not tricking yourself. Sometimes you just got to warm it. Okay, so just drink it and then set it on the. Yeah, and you can move them around if you don't. If you're not quite sure. Okay. 
And Burger King did brew theirs fresh just for me. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> they go the extra mile. I bet you'll at least okay. go Boba Conte. I'm going to set that aside okay. just for a second. Okay. I should have given you something to cleanse your palate. I got water right here. Okay. Is that good enough? Mm-hmm. Mm. What did that taste like to you? Um, it didn't taste like Starbucks. Okay. Do you know which one? They, I mean, you know which we one. We labeled written. them on, on the, the bottom, bottom. Okay. so we're going to see how well you did at the end. Oh, smell. That <laughs> 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 must be Speedway or something. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to set that there for now. Okay. For now. He set the cup on Speedway for those listening. He has two more left. I would totally fail because I don't know coffee at all. Well, the flavors of coffee can be pretty similar. This so. is going to be hugely yeah. embarrassing if I don't get Boba Conti right. I, that's what I was I'm sorry, <laughs> Justin, Sam. Um, I will tell you, I went back there like a few hours after my shift so it wouldn't be super old. And they were out of the single origin. So it is the Clarity Blend. That makes a ton Which is our house blend. Okay. I know. I wanted it to be the Peru. I like it because when you drink it, I can see which one it is. Because when he... Oh, you really? Yeah. That's funny. So, have you... Do you know, like, about single origins and blends at all? <sighs> no, I'm, like, not really a coffee drinker, so I don't oh, know I much forgot. about coffee. Oh, I forgot. You don't coffee. even... Yeah, you don't even like it. That's not... You're, you're not a basic B. I know. I need to... I, I think I like it with, like, all the crap in it, See? Though. There you mm-hmm. go. Yeah. That's, that's Do you like good. matcha? No. Those are the bubbly things, right? That's boba. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you only know about what? Coke. <laughs> Water. Water. Okay. He's narrowing it down. Leave that one there. All right. I guess it didn't help that we we're burning a candle. Yeah, that I didn't think help about either, that. That's all right. I can. I can get enough smell. This is not a very. It's interesting. It's kind of like <laughs> wine, you know, because you see people with this wine is, where this they one's stir tricky. it. The smell is not moving. <laughs> I got it. I'll get it. All right. Oh yeah, we didn't really clean that part out well. Okay. I'm putting this one over here based on smell. Okay. I'm going to go back to this one, and then I'm going to do that one again, and then I, <laughs> I'm just going to just go with it. Okay. I kind of sprung this on you. Yeah. So, like, I'm guessing Speedway is probably the crappiest coffee, at least not I would say Burger King. Not necessarily. Really? Hmm. Typically, I think that one is. Starbucks. As far as drip goes. Okay. How many people do you know get drip coffee from there? Think about it. They're all getting frappuccinos. Right, lattes, yeah, that's true. Stuff, right? We have a lot of people get drip at the coffee shop I work at. Really? Yeah. That, I'm assuming that's like where you put the coffee beans in. And like yeah, that's just like normal slowly. coffee. You know, like diner coffee in the yeah. pot. It's like that. Mm-hmm. But um, we have a house blend and then we have a single origin, which is like a more adventurous. Okay. I'm going to go with it. The smell is tricking me on this one. Okay. How but confident do you feel? <laughs> Not very confident at all. Okay, okay. do you want yeah. us to check? Let's check. Let's okay. start with Speedway. Okay. So this is the one he guessed is Speedway. It's Bova. Really? <laughs> See, that, you know why that one? Why I put that one there? Why? Because it smelled like French vanilla. Oh. That's... This one's Starbucks. Okay. <gasps> oh. 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 He said yeah. Starbucks okay. at Bova. So this one, the reason why I did that is because that's I was going to put that one at Starbucks because of the smell. Oh. But it's actually, it's got a strong flavor because that clarity's got a strong flavor. I'm mm-hmm. going to say that this is probably boba then. Okay, let's see if you're right. I thought this one was boba. <laughs> oh, no, Speedway's boba. You're right. This one is Speedway. Speedway. Okay. okay. So you really think highly of Starbucks so you, coffee. Yeah, you put Speedway's coffee with Starbucks. And then Burger King. You got Burger King right. Okay. I will say. I got one right. When you started, you had them all right. Did I? Yes. Oh, when really? you started, you had them all right, so and then you did the this that's one hilarious. Speedway one. Speedway messed you up. This is the Starbucks. So See, Speedway this is This smells good. like Starbucks. Boba's. It doesn't taste... The, the one I set on Boba mm-hmm. smelled like Starbucks. Oh. And I had it on Starbucks. That's hilarious. But it didn't have... Mm-hmm. Didn't have the, the twang in the back. So this one was which one? The boba, and I yeah. put that on Speedway. Actually, it will drink Speedway coffee. Really? It was just funny because you had Gosh, them all right at man. first. I'm kind I of. Them. I switched that one because it had that has a 
French vanilla smell, and you can get like a French vanilla Speedway. Uh-huh. I just. I that's hilarious. That's interesting. Sam, our coworker, told me to tell him how you reacted to Starbucks. So he'll be. He'll be amused. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna be real happy. Oh, I'm not gonna. It's, it's a this. good thing your last day there <laughs> oh, is next yes. week. Yeah, at least you have your own coffee shop. This is not gonna be good. Oh. <laughs> so speaking of coffee, what is your go-to coffee order? Black coffee. Really? Mm-hmm. Nothing special. Mm-hmm. Just Do you black get single coffee. origin mm-hmm. or a... single origin? Okay. I like Ethiopia. I All like right. natural process. Um, natural process just as a sweeter coffee. Oh. So I like natural process pretty much of anything, and I like lighter roasts. Okay. Yeah. I used not to. I used to not like coffee. Interesting. I didn't start drinking so coffee. So there's till, hope for better. There, there is hope yeah. for me. I didn't start drinking coffee till. I feel like I'll need coffee if I have kids, you know? Like, I think that's when I'll really start <laughs> drinking coffee. <laughs> You're going to need something. That's yeah. True. Yeah. That's, that's exactly. True statement. So, one of my questions for you was can you actually make good coffee at home, or what's your opinion on like making coffee at home? Absolutely, if you have a good grinder. So, it's the key all... is the grinder. Okay, so let, let's be honest. It starts with the roast. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you're if you're getting roast that are real oily, mm-hmm. that's not good mm-hmm. because that makes that'll make it sour or very tart, very t- you know um, stringent, mm-hmm. and and so the oil is not a good thing. Okay, so if you okay. see something that's not as even if it's a dark roast, I'm not against dark roast. I just mm-hmm. prefer a lighter roast. But if you see a dark roast that doesn't have a lot of oil on it, it's probably going to taste better than one that has a lot of oil on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but start with your roast. Okay, so. Okay. Get a good roast. You're going to have to pay a little bit more money for it. Mm-hmm. But a grinder. The grinder is hands down the most important part of equipment that you can have. So, so don't a, have like a slice grinder, like a blade grinder. You want like I a see. Burr, burr grinder. Crushes it rather than slices it. Oh, Ooh. that's what's wrong with my coffee at home. Because I don't really drink coffee at home, but my mom does. Gotcha. And ours has the blade. And I'm yeah. like, this just doesn't taste good. It doesn't. It, it chops the, mm-hmm. the, the bean and it mm-hmm. doesn't get it in equal sizes. So when you crush it, you can get it into more of a, a consistent uh, grind than when you have a blade. Yep. And so, I bet getting like the nice, like a nicer roast would mm-hmm. be still cheaper than going to Starbucks every day. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because Starbucks, yeah. they're like five yeah. bucks a pop. Well, yeah. something I learned about Boba Conti, the coffee shop I work at, is that it costs like something like 40 cents to brew a huge vat of our drip coffee. But, you know, we sell each cup for like two to four dollars, mm-hmm. depending yeah. on what you get. So. Mm-hmm. You, you can make a big profit on it. Yeah. I mean, it's a small cost mm-hmm. item, but it, there's decent margins on it. Yeah. But it just, you have to sell a lot to make yeah. anything. So your main advice to somebody who is making theirs primarily at home is to get a good grinder rather than like the actual coffee maker. Yeah. Get a good burr grinder. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, so everything's processed a certain way, right? So your K-Cups. They're just, they just basically ruin your coffee. You know, really? Don't freeze your coffee. Don't put it in the freezer. You can put beans, whole beans in the freezer, but if you're going to grind it, don't uh, just go ahead and do it. Like grind and then serve. Okay. So don't put, but it really doesn't do it. It's not going to make it more fresher, last longer. You can put it in the freezer. Okay. Uh, just put it, keep it in a bag and put it in room temperature and store it in the dark place. Okay. Yeah. Did you have something? Mm-hmm. About roasting coffee? I don't know. Oh, no. Sure. I thought you had something to say. I don't oh, know. Oh, no. Um, so, back to your coffee shop. Mm-hmm. So, you're working in Bova. You're going back to Dry Bones. So, it's called Dry Bones Mud House. Mm-hmm. I actually haven't asked you this yet. I don't know why it's called that, but will you explain why you chose that name? Absolutely. And, like, the marketing idea behind it. So, the way it happened, the original name was Cups. <laughs> And cups. Cups. Yeah. It, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. It was a, it was a, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, anagram? No, not anagram. Oh, um, um, I know what you're talking about. Acronym. C. Acronym. Thank you. Yes. Acronym. It was an acronym. <laughs> that, that. And it was, <laughs> so, uh, cups, um, was for, um, community, mm-hmm. unique, uh, prosper, prosperous, and then service. Okay. So, um, that's what it was. And I didn't like it. But I was just sort of going with it. And then a, a friend of mine came to me before we left Florida. And he said, hey, I've been praying about some things. 
Uh, and two words popped in my head, and I was like, okay. And his name was Butch. And it wasn't the kind of guy that I thought would sort of be praying about things like this, but he's yeah, super, super great guy. I love Butch. <laughs> Anyways, he was like, dry bones. And I went, okay. Well, he goes, whatever you want to do with it, whatever. You know, the name, whatever. Just that. It came to my mind, and I was like, okay, sounds good. And then mm-hmm. a few weeks went by, and it just drove me insane. Like, I was like, oh, I can't get it out of my head. And then... Um, you ever read Ezekiel 37? Yes. So Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel gets a vision from God and it's just this huge valley. It's nothing but bones in the valley. And he basically says to Ezekiel, can can these things, can these bones come to life? And, you know, Ezekiel's like, only you know God and only you can make that happen. And so it's a really cool story because Ezekiel is watching like in this vision, mm-hmm. right? He's seeing like, like, the bones rise up and then the muscles and the tendons and it's like forming mm. like something you would see in like some kind of science fiction movie yeah. right skin forming over and everything and it comes with this huge army and then he just basically does it by breathing life into him and that's how it comes to life so the dry bones aspect of it is for us and then cups is now our mission statement oh cool um, so we you kept that yeah we did keep it it's our mission statement um, but we're basically our, our vision statement is we want to stoke the flames of community and we want to um, create to sort of inspire and, and, and help dry dead things come back to life. So whether wow. it's whether it's waking up in the morning, right, coffee, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, you're feeling dead, you need coffee, then we're going to get you a cup of coffee. If it's if you're having a, you're struggling with something or you're just emotionally tired, you're mentally drained or whatever, where they're just as servers, baristas sit at the bar, hang out, sort of like a bartender yeah. type deal. So Dry Bones is based in Ezekiel 37. I, mean, I added on the mud in the house because I just didn't want something that's been used. I was tired of coffee house, coffee shop, yeah. you know, yeah. coffee bar. So mud is actually not a very good term for coffee. It's sort of one of it's like usually related to gas station coffee, right. you know, uh, that drudge at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And it's just sort of thick, you know. Um, but uh, so, yeah, mud house. I wanted something that was like <clears throat> not very clean it was just sort of like you know opening up somebody's living room and they haven't planned on anybody coming over and so they haven't picked up anything but it's lived in you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's just lived in you can come hang out feel comfortable sometimes you walk into a person's place and you feel like you just can't touch anything because it's so clean mm-hmm. and so you know it's like almost like it's been sanitized the whole you know it's just like no just this has been lived in you right know? this is a living place and people can come and hang out and just relax and chill so that's cool. really yeah. cool i bet yeah. butch enjoys getting the credit for that a little oh, yeah. bit absolutely and, and does he I, get royalties <laughs> No, he does not. Um, there's not a whole lot of royalties going on right now. Royalties since he gave him uh, that. Yeah. So, but I do credit Butch for that, and yeah, it was. That's cool. I really enjoyed it. And then our logo, which I'll if have you have shirt. a shirt. Oh yeah, show your shirt. Um, our logo. We actually did this cool thing. Uh, a local um, illustrator that was at the church we were going to, he drew it up, and then Derek cleaned it up, and so this is actually Brewbeard. That's his name. We I did, was going to say, it looks like it has yeah, a beard. We did a, a, um, a customer, the customers named this. So we did this whole March Madness, but not in March, uh, tournament. Mm-hmm. And we had people throw in name suggestions and they threw their name suggestions in. And so me and the family, Derek and his wife, we sat down. We took all the names that we really liked and enjoyed. And then we paired them against each other in the Sweet 16 matchup. Mm-hmm. And then we did it on Instagram and Facebook and people voted on which one was their favorite. That's so we cool. did a time frame. And so uh, a lady, um, Alia, she was she worked in the building. She actually won the entire tournament. She had the name Brewbeard. She got the most votes. Of course, I think she had all her family and everybody was like, voting. Of course, yeah. And we gave her some merch and some coffee That's and stuff. That's nice. And so we ended up Brewbeard's our guy. So on the other shirt, we're actually starting to personify him a little bit. Oh, so we're he giving has him a, a body uh, and everything. Personality. Now. Yeah. So we're we're giving him a body. Uh, he's going to be in some other shirts and some other things that we're going to do and sort of make him, uh, make him a dude and have fun and just make be inviting. Make them bones and, up. Yeah, and that's our tagline: wake them bones up. Oh, wake! Th- I thought it said make wake them bones up. That's so yeah. cute. That's awesome. I love it. And Derek is our coworker, which yeah. you knew, but yeah. Um, yeah. that's really cool. So my question was: as a, what are three good tips you can give a small business owner, maybe wanting to start their own business? Um, prepare for a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, prepare for. Probably <laughs> oh not anymore. Have a good say, uh, emergency fund. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. Know know why you're doing what you're doing. So, 
don't try to do everything. Mm-hmm. Do the one thing that you're really good at and go with that and then let the other things fall into place. Um, fun fact, I knew nothing about coffee. I didn't drink coffee before I opened up a coffee shop. I never worked in a coffee shop. Hmm. Um, I didn't know how to make coffee. None of it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I felt called to open up a coffee shop. So I went to Portland for 15 days, got trained, come back home, threw away all my stuff that I knew I didn't need to have anymore, Mm -hmm. got me some brew, you know, uh, manual brews, Chemex and stuff like that, started making my own coffee and just started doing cuppings and everything and dove into research. So even if you don't have experience in something, but you feel like that's what you're supposed to be doing, you're passionate about it, because I'm passionate about customer service. Mm -hmm. I love to be behind the bar. Uh, I love coffee, but Mm -hmm. I... I'm not going to be a coffee snob to where we're going to, you know, there's certain coffee shops in town that do that really good. Yeah. I'm not going to have a drink of the month every month. I just, I'm not, I'm there to make the drinks that we need to make, have great quality drinks, Mm -hmm. but also be relational with the people and build those relationships. So I opened up a coffee shop because I'm I'm a relational kind of guy. I used Mm -hmm. to be a small groups pastor and that's what I was supposed to do is get people in a relationship. And I just love being behind the bar. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew that. That was the first thing. The second thing was, is um, you need to make money to stay open. Mm -hmm. So don't be, don't be afraid to have to do things. And this is not like sacrificing your morals type deal. I'm saying like step out a little bit and say, Hey, I, okay, I need to make money. So what do I need to do to make money? Mm -hmm. Some people get into business and they just think that they're just going to go and, um, give everything away and do, you know, free mm-hmm. stuff here, discounts here. You're going to discount yourself out of business if you do that. Don't yeah. be afraid um, to charge people what the value is of mm-hmm. what you're serving, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. Um, I'm a very generous guy, so I will do that a lot of times. But I had to stop and say, okay, I'm going to discount myself out of business. So yeah. I am. this is worth this. I need to serve it and people will pay for it. And they do, and they will mm-hmm. appreciate that. And also to... Um, don't be afraid to go, like, if whatever it is you want to do, go meet other people in that that are already doing it. Mm-hmm. I went to every coffee shop I could in town, met with almost every owner, sat down with them, was flat out honest. I'm opening up a coffee shop. I want to learn from you. What are the, the do's, the, the don'ts, the good, the bad? I just want to hear from you. And then not just talk to them about it, but build a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, I know a lot of people in the coffee industry in Indiana because I spent the first year or so just going to coffee shops talking with people and mm-hmm. and you find out how nice people are and how willing they are to offer information you just got to go and ask yeah but don't just try to do it like build resources mm-hmm. network build relationships and that's the biggest thing is relationships so, interesting that's what life's all about yeah. so did you know the boba coffee owner yes. because of that yeah so that's- justin justin actually saved me uh he he came in it was awesome because i didn't know it was nine percent tax downtown and so we were charging seven percent that's a lot and yes and so our first month we were serving people and then he noticed it wasn't nine percent tax and he just walked by said hey man just want to let you know you might want to know that it's nine percent sales tax instead of seven percent i was like Oh, okay. Yeah, that's insane. So, yeah. And so after that, he would come by because he was doing some things with, mm-hmm. coffee-wise with some of the companies in the building. And uh, we just started talking, and I'd stop mm-hmm. in, and we'd chat and, and, and everything. And then I started talking to him for advice, and then we just sort of started just sort of sharing, you know, experiences. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, eventually when we ended up shutting down, I just went to go talk to him about um, – just what was going on, what, yeah. where we were at as a coffee shop. And then he was like, I need a couple of people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I got a couple of people, me and Derek. Right. <laughs> so, and then he hired us. And so we've been there uh, August since August 2020. So if I stay on another month, it would actually be a year that I've been above a Wow. So you're going to open the doors back up to dry yeah. bones and yeah. see how it goes? Yeah. Yeah, and, and right. people are starting to come back. So, and yeah, there's a there's the, a couple of hotels down there now where we're at. There's uh-huh, another good. building, so it's getting there. Yeah, it's I bet there. the people, the tech people, were a lot of your business too. Yeah, it was most of my business. We yeah. don't have a whole lot of walking around business. Even yeah. like a Colts game wasn't. They just they're they're wanting to tailgate and right, drink true, other things. Yeah. Coffee was not yeah, one of them. Yeah, they did not want coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. the so, next morning. Yeah. But. Yeah. 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 Um, do you serve pub cups? I don't. I have milk. <laughs> I have milk bones. Oh, yeah. that's a, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. So we did milk bones. That's more clever. And we would break them up and give them. You know, uh, I break it in half. I give it to him once, and then I would give it to him again. But 
some of the uh, companies had like a day where they could bring a dog in or dogs. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so they would come down and eventually the dogs knew just like with the pup cups, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah. I'm stopping here. And not going anywhere else until I get my milk yeah. bone. So, yeah, we do milk bones. Okay, cool. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Um, and then my other question was, oh, what's, like, the most weird encounter you've had thus far owning a coffee shop? <laughs> um, I mean, Bo- Boba Conti, we've had some interesting ones. That's, I mean, with um, you being downtown, I bet you get some interesting people. Oh, yeah. I right. think the one is... You're in Fountain Square. Uh-huh. Right. I can't say any one order or experience. I mean... We've had some people come in, and, and it's not something that, that was a fun experience. So sometimes we get homeless people come in, and, of course. and we try to serve them. When they get, we give them a free cup of coffee and everything, and, and we've never had really any issues or anything like that. Uh, so they've been really good. But I, the, the awkward situation is when somebody comes in, and they've been getting coffee from another place, another place, and then they come in, and they just expect us to have it. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, mm-hmm. what is that? That happened the other day. It did happen the other day. Yeah. And I can't remember. It was some it was weird name. Some share. I can't remember what. I think. I don't think it was actual drink. I think it, it was something that up. they got somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. I had never. And heard of it. So like, it was very simple. But huh. I was like. She didn't explain it though. She goes, "Do you have this?" And I'm like, yeah. "I'm so sorry. What does that mean?" Yeah. Interesting. So like, it's. Like, for instance, Starbucks, they have their weird menu. Yeah. So, like, they try to order kind of like a Starbucks yeah. drink or... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, people don't understand yeah. that, like, a cappuccino is smaller than a latte, yeah. so people always order, like, can I have a large yeah. cappuccino? It's like... We have to constantly explain the traditional drinks, which is great because it's it's educating, but yet they know what to get, what not to get, but, like, the he macchiato... It's great. I, I love it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> the macchiato um, is probably yeah. the Oh, yeah. People, that's the one. do you know what a macchiato is? No. <laughs> the macchiato is, like, really small. Anyone who's listening, it's a very tiny drink. It's two shots with a little bit of foam. Literally two ounces. So yeah. It's like a, two ounces. So when Literally, you, like, a little shot of coffee. It's right. two shots it's, and, some ste- and some foam. Uh-huh. And that's it. And you just put a dollop on there. Right. But it's about that much. Huh. So a caramel macchiato, if somebody says that, then we're just assuming, you know, it's basically a latte. So. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Fun fact. Um, I was wondering, have you ever heard of cat poop coffee? Are you talking about civet? Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> You're so knowledgeable. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, w- I didn't even know that was an animal. Kopi Luwak. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. Um, two two stories about it. Number one, it's terrible coffee. Oh, really? It's, it's have disgusting. Have you tried it? Um, I have not, but I've taught. I have not, but I have. Like in my it. training, so in my training in Portland, we asked about that. And oh. then they got sort of a little upset. <gasps> not at us, but because this has become... Um, a animal rights issue uh, yes. because they've been caging and so they're not just doing civets anymore they're doing other animals are forcing them to eat I've heard coffee monkeys. beans and then so civets is like a, more like a, a cat type deal um, but monkeys even elephants. elephants and so they're forcing them to eat it and then when they poop it out then they're turning it into they're turning into coffee that is crazy the other funny story though is a pastor had bought a whole bunch of Kopi Luwak passed a bean out to everybody and it was all chocolate covered and then he did his little sermon and it was more like a don't judge a book by its cover type mm-hmm. sermon and he had them all eat it and they didn't know they just thought it was chocolate covered coffee bean and they all ate it and then he told them what it was that's <laughs> terrible I'd be like so, so, so annoyed so basically like a listener <laughs> if there's a listener confused right now it's the animal called a civet. Civet. It's like yeah. a cat thing. Yeah. It eats. Um, I think it's Indonesian or something. Like that. Yeah, I think it is too. Yeah. And its stomach doesn't process the actual bean, so it poops out the bean. So then, people are digging through its poop to get to this bean. Yeah. But it's really expensive to get some of this Very coffee. Very expensive. I wonder. I just want to know who thought of this. Like, well, I'm going to feed this animal. It was in a poor area, so yeah. oh. they like realized the beans yeah. were in there, and they're like, "Let's dig yeah. them out." Yeah. And then they're like, "This is delicious." Like, I don't know. No, tastes are subjective. So, yes, <laughs> yes. well, um, I was. This is obviously not about coffee, but you're just such an interesting person. Obviously, thank you. I have to bring up. Your cheer history. Okay. (laughs) So you've coached competitive cheer, Mm -hmm. and you met your wife through cheer. So talk a little bit about how you got there. 
So um, I went to college. I'm a late bloomer. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I did college at 18, but I did night school and I dropped out. Mm-hmm. Couldn't even last half a semester. So then worked for several years. And then I went back to school when I was like 22. Okay. So I was much older than everybody else. Uh, I had been nursing sort of a little bit of an injury from a job that I had. But when I got there, I was planning on trying to play football. Mm-hmm. And then I was working out um, and I was in the gym and all the cheerleaders came in. And it was like as many guys as girls. I'm not used to that. Mm-hmm. So they had a lot of guys on the team and they were trying to compete. And it's a small school, small school in Greenville, South Carolina, a uh, little NAIA school. It's like the, the private Christian school, private school level. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, I ended up, uh, well, there was a cheerleader. She was like the captain and she was cute and I liked her and I was like, oh yeah, she's a cheerleader. And then all the guys were like, you should cheer. And she was like, you should cheer. And I was, all right, I guess I'll go to a practice. I was like, this is yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, I went to a practice and the guys were tossing the girls up in the air. So if you don't know, male cheerleaders throw girls around. We're, we're allowed to. They let us. Okay. <laughs> and um, they, one of the girls came over and they were like, toss her. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. She was almost as tall as me too. So I was like. Oh my gosh. So I tossed her and I couldn't do what they call as a chair sit where the girl sits on the guy's hand. Mm-hmm. You hold the leg and she's sitting and her rear end is on my hand. Mm-hmm. And, um. I couldn't do it. But these smaller guys that were there were tossing their chair partners around. They were doing it. I was like, "Uh -uh. uh-uh, this is not happening. And then I was hooked. So fast forward, my wife comes down. I got her brother to cheer. And so he was a football player. I got him to cheer. She comes down to help our squad out. I never met her before. Didn't know who she was. She was a... cheered at Moorhead State, which is at that time was nine times national champion. Like Moorhead State's got the most national championships of any sport of any school in the country. Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah, they're like 30 time national champions in cheer. I didn't know that. So <clears throat> when they won, she had just won. They were, it was her ninth time and she was like fourth or fifth in partner stunt. And so mm-hmm. she was really good. And she's, she comes up to here on me. She's mm-hmm. real tiny. So she comes and it was definitely, um, Lust at first sight for me. (laughs) I will say that, honestly. Um, And she taught, but she was teaching us. And then I tossed her up in the air and I was like, and she went all the way up here and I caught her feet and then I went and I just dumped her off to the side. She stayed straight as a board. And then, thank goodness, all the guys caught her. I did. I was so shocked and I felt bad. And then from that point on, when she went that high and I was able to do that, I was like, oh, this is for me. <laughs> so that was it. I was hooked from that point on. That's and um, cool. she ended up moving down from Moorhead the next year. And she cheered on our cheer squad for a couple of years. And then we got married. So you did all of the tossing. You didn't do like tumbling or anything. Oh, gosh. I did do tumbling. Oh, I was really? not good at it. Um, I could do a round off tuck. I could do a round off back handstring tuck. I didn't do that in the routine. I just did a, a round off tuck and a standing tuck. Mm-hmm. Now my standing tuck was really good, but that's not really hard for boys. What is a men standing tuck? Just a backflip, standing backflip. Okay. You stand there and you jump and backflip. Okay. So that wasn't very hard for guys to do. It's a lot right. harder for girls mm-hmm. just because of the way we're built differently. Okay. Yeah. But um, I was not a tumbler. Oh. I was just long. I never learned it. Mm-hmm. I tried to backyard tumble. It's like the shorter people are better at tumbling. Probably. Yeah. Okay. But so if you've been like, trained for a while, like you could yeah. be longer and tumble very well. They I always say longer people look better tumbling and look better flying. But oh. you don't find a lot of people that are taller doing right. those things. So. Okay. And but then yeah. you taught cheerleading or? I did. So we started teaching at a local all-star gym in the area. And, um, and then just, and then we got married and then we moved and I became a program director for a, um, all-star program called Champs for Christ in Mississippi. And then eventually moved to Florida, opened up my own gym, had that for about four years, sold it, and then went into, uh, worked for the guy who sold it or who bought it. And then eventually got burned out. Just yeah. it was just a lot. Um, because like when lot. You, when you're doing it full time, you have to do a lot of different things, and it takes you away. So I was judging, uh, which was taking me to all across the country doing mm. camps, choreography, music editing, like everything you could yeah. do. Not to mention coaching on top of that and doing tumbling classes. So something I was curious about was 
Is it possible to cheat in competitive cheerleading? And how would you do that? Yeah, that's a good question. Only possibly age-wise, if you can get away with somebody, but they check ages. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like football, like youth football. Mm -hmm. You can cheat in youth football, but typically it's just by having an older kid on your team. So you can't, like, morph somebody's music or something? (laughs) You know, they used to do, so uh, they would... I remember watching a competition once, and one team had to go practice in sort of like the basement because the other team was adjusting their routine Mm -hmm. the second day they came out with looking a lot like what the other routine was doing. So it's not really cheating because you're allowed to adjust your routine Mm -hmm. uh, at that point in time, but things have changed a lot. So you sort of have to sort of keep it the same way. So, Do you go to any competitions anymore? I don't, but my daughter is now doing all-star cheer. Again, I, my kids have done it before, but since we moved up here, they didn't do it. But she's doing it now because she's cheering in high school, and she wants to cheer in college. So I was like, you got to do all-stars mm-hmm. you know, to get your skills up to where you, when you go to college, you can make a trial for a team and make it. So she is doing all-stars. And so now we're back in that world again. So will she be like flying or what? She is a base. Okay. She will be a base. She's on a level two team, which means she can do a backhand spring and a roundup backhand spring. Okay. Um, and then she, she's, she's on the ground. She used to fly. Oh. Yeah. She's, she's grown. And so she's gotten to a point now where she's less flying okay um this is my interest in dance moms coming out (laughs) um have you ever had run-ins with like super competitive or high maintenance parents or like ultimate karens or cheer parents are are the worst really (laughs) they're the worst they're either your best friend or your worst enemy yeah well there's a stereotype for sure about cheerleaders cheer dads can be even worse than cheer moms really yeah that surprises me yes um were you like that no (laughs) i'm sure you're not after having to deal with it (laughs) because i'm a coach i look at things differently when i walk into like you know when you walk into a coffee shop Mm -hmm. right you look at things differently uh, I, I look at things differently. So I evaluate differently. I give the coaches a lot more grace, but they just don't know what they're doing. I will not put I will not put my kids in that. They so, can get hurt. Yes, they definitely could get hurt. And it just doesn't, they're not learning anything. I'm paying yeah. a lot of money. It, it's a lot of money to do all sorts of What's it like start out? Like if you have a young girl, how much would it I mean, you, you could be looking between two to $5,000 a year wow. and it's year round. It's That's a right. lot more than yeah. I thought. Yeah. It depends on the squad. It depends on the competitions. It, it's pricey. It's not cheap. What's the worst injury you've ever seen? Mm. So. Or had. Um, I have landed on my head several times. Oh, my gosh. Tumbling. Ow. I uh, broke my nose. I never broke my nose until cheerleading. Um, oh, that I broke my horrible. hand. Oh, here. I'll tell you the story. Um, summer camp. And. Uh, buddy and I, we were finishing the camp. So we always do a staff. We always do stunts and everything. We pull everybody together. We get all excited. So we were doing a basket toss. If you don't know what a basket toss is, where you lock hands with a, 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 another base and you loosen up. Flyer jumps in. There's a person behind them. They jump in and then they put their hand underneath your hands and then you guys launch the flyer into the air. Okay. So I, we launched the flyer to the air and my friend Shoeless was the back base. It got off a little bit. And I stumbled a little bit to my left, so to over I overcorrected coming back in. And when I came back in, she was coming down. I went to catch, and then I shoved my hand because she was already he was already grabbing her, and so there was like no room. But I had to get my arm in there, so I shoved my hand in there. My finger got caught on his shirt. Oh no! And then and went here, so my finger stayed, but my hand kept going, and so <laughs> I felt it pop Ow. in immediate pain. Uh, and I'm looking at my hand, and my finger's just sort of hanging. I have no control over it. <laughs> and I'm facing that way. The cr- kids are behind me, and I'm like, like this. And she was just looking at me like, are you okay? And I, and I went, I thought it was out of socket, out of joint. Oh, so I pulled oh, no. it and then shoved it in. And I... <laughs> I almost screamed right there. And he saw my face get red. And I just turned around and I was, and it was a little hot, but I was sweating from the pain. So I put my hand behind my back like this. Ew. And I stood there for the entire ending, went and took pictures with all my cheerleaders, and then went straight to the emergency room and got casted. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm I, impressed. I broke this bone right here. And uh, almost went through my skin, but yeah. Oh my gosh! It hurts so bad. I bet. 
I've seen some pretty nasty breaks, though. I mean, yeah. you see some pretty nasty stuff, some pretty nasty tumbles. Cheer fails are probably the most fun thing to watch, though, if you're watching it. So it's pretty fun. I get sympathy pain whenever I watch stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So I ha- I get, like, really bad heebie-jeebies. Uh, so um, on MTV, they have a show called Ridiculousness. I don't know if you've ever I seen do it. know what that is, yeah. And they call, like, this one thing where people land on their heads uh, and their bodies gosh. in the air, like yes. the scorpions. Yeah. I bet the, you see the, that oh, a lot. Yeah, oh, where they're, lot. like, oh. bit, and totally then they rest their bodies yeah. in the air, and I'm like, that looks terrible. Yeah. 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 I I get sympathy pain too. I tell people it's a full contact sport without pads. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. It seems super dangerous. Okay. Well, um, did you have any other questions about cheer? Um, I was going to ask you, did you ever make a girl cry? <laughs> oh, yeah. As or did coach? girls cry a lot? <laughs> you yes. made cry as a kid. Oh, yeah. My yeah. dad was my basketball coach, and he yeah. made me cry, too, so oh. I guess I can't say well, anything. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Um, it's, it, uh, it's a different – you have to coach differently. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's just – I don't know. It's different. It's hard. It's hard to coach cheerleading, but mm-hmm. it is also a lot of fun. Yeah. So what ages were you coaching? I coached from four years old all the way up to 40-year-olds. What was your favorite age group? <sighs> I think the kids would be fun. But I feel like I, teaching they, little girls be. how to, like, Youth was a lot of fun because they're just ready, mm-hmm. um, but it was, it was a lot of fun working with the high school kids. Oh, okay. Yeah, because so, they have, like... They yeah. can get jokes and stuff, yeah. yeah, which would be nice. We had an open team too, so that was like adults too. So okay. that was a lot of fun. Actually, my wife and I were on that team. So, but it's also divided by levels too. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you have a mix of ages. You can have younger ones with the high school ones if they're very advanced younger ones. I They'll see. move move up sometimes. So okay, I think that I don't want to get too political, but obviously, the fact that you worked at the border is really interesting. <laughs> So, I know you've seen some crazy animals. Um, what's the scariest one you've ever seen? Mountain lion, for sure. Um, I, and that was not... Uh, so, the mountain lion, I was driving home from a shift, and I saw a cow in the middle of the road. So, in, in Arizona, where I worked, it was open range. Mm-hmm. There was no... Cows could just be wherever, okay? Um, they kept these little things in the ground that were round and so their hose would get in so they couldn't cross that but other than that they just roamed free and um cow i saw something going down the middle of the road and it was daylight and i'm like what the heck and it was huge uh it was like a calf but a little bit not a a young one so i'm watching it go down the middle of the road i'm like why is this thing in the middle of the road this is not usual not typical really hoping nobody's going to hit it and next thing i know i saw something leap from one side of the road the shoulder of one side of the road to the shoulder of the other side of the road and almost spanned that in its body. And I realized it was a mountain lion and the calf was running away from the mountain lion. And this mountain lion jumped from one side to the other to go down and it went off into the woods. I didn't see the mountain lion. I probably don't, I'm going to assume it did not survive, but yeah, we see on trail cams, we would see them all the time, Mm -hmm. especially on deer trails. You would see them all the time. You just don't get really a sense of how big, big and long yeah. they are. And, uh, yeah, they're no jokes. You so got to be careful, scary. especially if you see tracks. So we're out looking for tracks all the time. And I've seen them. I've seen them where we were walking. Ooh. Or I've seen them we weren't walking. I mean, we were walking and you didn't see them. But on the way back, you see them behind you. Because they do, they do, they're, they're hunters. So sometimes they will track you if they don't really know. And you don't see a lot of attacks, but it can happen. That's kind of yeah. weird. But those, they're scary. Yeah. What was the one you saw up in the tree? I don't remember what animal. Oh, that was a porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> I, so that it, was in Arizona? Yeah. I, I, thought, I didn't realize they lived there. They do. We got, they got beautiful skunks. I could tell you that story. That's a funny story. But mm. the porcupine was real simple. We were out. We thought there was a group out there. And so we have this night camera that you can see and, and mm-hmm. you see heat. And uh, so we we're driving and I was on top of the, the truck and I was looking and also I saw something in a tree. I was like, oh, there's there's a person in that tree. That's how big it was. <laughs> and I go oh over God. there. <laughs> Nobody else believed me. And they were just like looking all over here. And I go over to the tree all by myself. I have my flashlight. And what they'll do is uh, the, the, they'll hide in the tree mm-hmm. and they think that you don't see them even when you're flashing a flashlight on them, they'll be in the back of a truck and you can flash a flashlight on them if they're not looking at you they they don't think you see them 
That's so weird. And so I, that's when I thought this was happening. I look up in there, and yeah, it was a porcupine, a huge porcupine in the tree. Oh my and gosh. I was like, oh, I'm going to back away now. Go over here. So it didn't expel nope. mm-hmm. the no. porks? What no. are those called? The, the, the pines. The, the porks of those pines. things. The, the, the porks, the and, the porks pine. and the pines. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. So the skunk. We yeah, I want to hear the story. The, the skunk story, uh, a buddy of mine, he was training me on a night camera. It's uh-huh. called a mill cam. He was training me on it. So we were at Bald Hill, and we were looking out over this area where we usually get a lot of traffic. And there was nothing going on. So we had the truck. No bushes, no trees, no nothing. It was a mm-hmm. full moon outside. We have Our trucks are white. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's like... We were, we're easily seen if anybody wanted to see us. The truck is over here. We have the radio on. Okay. I've got the camera. And he's like, look, dude, nobody's coming. We've been here 10 hours. Let's go ahead and go. So I was like, I'll just let me pan one more time. So I'm panning, I'm panning, I'm panning, I'm panning. And then I see about 20 people coming up a trail. And they just show out of nowhere. And then, then they drive into a canyon. I'm watching. I'm like, dude, I see, I see a group. And he's like, where? And next thing you know, they're like, in the camera, they start off like that big. And then they turn into that big. Like, they were right there and they're coming right at us. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, we can't hide. So he goes to turn off the radio. Ends up turning the engine on. The lights flash. Alarm goes off. Turns it off. And then I'm like, looking through the camera. And they stopped. So as they're standing there. And then they're like doing this. And then they just keep going. And so they could go one of two ways. Well, one way is away from us. The other way is right at us. Well, then they come right at us. So I have the camera. It's super loud. It's like, because it sounds like a film reel to reel. And I'm like, it's on a stand. It's like this tall. So I'm like, oh, no bushes, tree, cars right there. So he is about 10 feet away and squats. I I can't see because when you look through a camera, the light blinds you. So you have no night vision. So when I took the camera away, I'm like this. Okay, so I had to get my eyes adjusted to the dark. So he's seeing things. I can't talk because they're like, they're 10 feet away and they're walking right in front of us. And then I hear this, I hear tap, 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 tap. And I'm like, it's like somebody's walking right up to me and I can't really see. The camera's laying in front of me. And I finally, I look over to him and I see this white and black fluffy animal. And I'm going... (laughs) What is this? <laughs> and I'm on, I'm kneeling down, and then it comes over towards me, and it sniffs my leg, like it was right there, and I almost cried. I was, I was like, oh, because we, people would hit skunks all the time out there, and we'd get on your truck, and it would be with you the whole entire shift, and it's the worst smell ever, and it's like almost gagging. And we've had agents get sprayed, and almost have to go to the hospital because it makes them gag so oh, bad. Oh my gosh. And he's sitting there and he's sniffing my leg and I'm like, please don't because we're about to jump the group. Mm-hmm. And anything's going to freak this guy out. He's turning yeah. around and I'm the first target. I'm right there. So he finally, after about 30 seconds, sniffs my leg, just looks up at me. I'm looking right at him. I'm like, oh Was he gosh. cute? He was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> he had, they have long hair. Or they're, they got a white. It's almost, almost like Peppy Le Pew type deal, but but just gorgeous, mm-hmm. beautiful animals. I wanted to pet it. And I was like, no. And he goes right where the group is. And I'm like, we got And he sprays the group. <laughs> so long story short, somehow my buddy finally comes over and gets to the front of the group to jump them. I'm coming around the back praying I don't run into the skunk and never saw him again. And yeah, we were out there another 10 hours trying to find people. So it was, but it was like, I can't believe I just got sniffed by a skunk. Like, oh my gosh. Like, At least you didn't yeah. get sprayed. Yeah, no, I, 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 that's what I thought. Like when we go over there and I'm starting to just wreak havoc, mm-hmm. like this thing is going to, he's just going to get mad and spray me, but he was nowhere to be found. I don't know where he went, but he was gone. So I can't believe he approached you. This it guy. was the weirdest thing. I've yeah. had bears crawl on our truck. I, I had a bear crawl on my camera truck twice. Oh two mornings gosh. in a row. Literally crawled on my truck. And then tried to get in my window. Oh, too. my gosh. I was trying to pet him. So, fair enough. I <laughs> you have to there. resist the urge. Did you, did you pet so him? Cute. No. His uh. nose got stuck in there. And then he tried to pull the window down. He almost jumped in. And I was like, electric windows, please work, please work, please work. Yeah. At least it wasn't like a <laughs> crank window. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it was Crank it. Yeah, it was scary because his claws yeah. were like that long. Oh my god! He was like gosh. a teenager. A teenage a, bear. It was yeah. crazy. Any other um, honorable mentions as far as animals go? Mm, gosh, uh, I um, I had a pack. You know what javelina are? Javelina. 
I think you told me this once, but I don't remember. Right. War hogs, wild, oh, wild yes. pigs. Right? Yes. Um, I was walking down a trail, not expecting anything. Next thing I heard, just an army of feet coming my way. Oh and my gosh. Yeah, I come around the corner and I ha- I'm like this, and I'm just sort of getting ready and like, what's going on? And it, it, it's like 15 javelina, and they just see me, and they just go straight up a hill. And this hill is like this. I mean, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Those things oh, my mean, gosh. Um, they used to make us on our field training um, unit. They had a, a cave they wanted us to go in. I didn't go in it. I was like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and the guy who went in first, he went, kept bowling out. And then all of a sudden, you hear them yelling, and they're coming running out. And there was a javelina at the end of it, and he was snorting, and he was not happy. Um, they're mean little suckers, but yeah, I'm, they got little monkey <laughs> things out there too, like uh, huh. uh, uh, Monday. Have you ever heard of Kuda Monday? It looks, it's like a civet type looking thing. It's like, okay. it's like part cat, part raccoon, uh-huh. but it looks like a monkey. Can they give those coffee beans? <laughs> Did you drink any coffee? If they, grew, <laughs> if they grew coffee beans in Arizona, I'm sure they would have tried. Um, now I see how this connects but, to your coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so lots of crazy animal stories out there for sure. So, um, what? Did you have a question at all? Um, I was just going to ask, like, so working at the border, you know, you hear about people getting mm-hmm. through, and mm-hmm. politics aside, do you think people can, like, is it pretty easy for people to uh, so, get through so without the government knowing? Of, give you an idea of our area. There was no wall. So Nogales was the major port, and there they had, a like, these steel beams, and they were, like, this far apart, and they were super tall, so they were really hard to Like go a few over. inches? Yeah, like you okay. couldn't, you couldn't, yeah. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, there's no way through. to cut yeah. through them. So and this was people what would year? still go. This is 2006, uh, 2009 to 2011. Okay. And uh, I mean, they still could go over ladders and you know mm-hmm. and do that yeah. and they tunnel. But um, our area was a seven layer barbed wire fence, mm-hmm. and that was it. And then there was up. So we were in a valley, and then there was a ridge, and there was the uh, Wachucas and the Patagonias, and yeah. there was no fence up there. Wow, so, so people could yeah, get yeah. through. There's tons there's of stuff. miles of no fence, and there's tons of miles Dang. of barbed wire. And there were vehicle, like we had vehicle barriers, but uh, like one of the last groups, the one of the last seizures I had was we got about 600 pounds of marijuana. Three trucks came through, and they break the welds, and they move these things, and they'll ramp over it. And then they'll put it back so we don't know. So that way they can keep using it. Mm-hmm. And so we have a fence crew that goes through and they constantly are checking the fence all the time. And, and not just the fence, the barbed wire, but the uh, vehicle barriers. But um, the one of my last seizures, uh, we got two of three trucks that had about 300, 400 uh, pounds of marijuana in Dang. each one. So uh, the third one actually drove right by us and we couldn't find somebody to go after it because we were already involved. So they got through? Yeah. Oh my wow. gosh! So, yeah, it's so it's, it happens. It's easy, so easy. Yeah, it's not. Wow. A lot of people don't realize the lack of barrier that mm-hmm. there is. I mean, it's, it's very easy. So, what's the craziest place you've seen somebody hide drugs? Uh, <laughs> never seen that place. <laughs> well, thank God. But um, it, there's plenty of stories that that did happen. Um, I've seen um, some crazy, what? crazy, yeah, <laughs> down at, down at the, in the Gallus at the port, they did it, it quite often and it did happen. And it you're talking happen. about yep. up the, the cavity. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, uh, swallowing it and then in the stomach as well. Really? Uh, yeah. And th- some people have died from that cause it breaks open. Ooh. Um, so what would they swallow? They would like, like packages of like heroin or yeah, oh my usually gosh. it's smaller things. So like. They would send the marijuana through in bundles, mm-hmm. and so people would either backpack it and be like 40 or 50 pounds per person, um, or they would do uh, cars, like mm-hmm. the one I was telling you about, and they put it in little bricks, and they would shove them in and stuff mm-hmm. them and everything. Um, but the smaller stuff like hero- heroin, uh, methamphetamines, things like that, pills, uh, they would ingest it, or they would shove it, you know, <laughs> do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the crazy thing is how they transport people across the border. There's, there's one person that they literally sewed into a seat, and that person was the seat. What? Yes. Yeah, they sewed them into a seat, and the person was the seat. Oh my yeah, gosh! It was crazy. They, I've seen them in uh, glove compartments, put them in the dashboard. Oh my Two or gosh. three people. 
Yeah. Dang. It's it terrifying. It is crazy how they can take they apart a vehicle and in. put people in there. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So. What would scare me is like if you got into a car accident. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. And people were I guess the dash. risk is worth yeah. it to them. Yeah. 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 Wow. So. That's insane. Yeah. What was your um, uniform and was it hot? Not was it attractive, was oh. it? <laughs> temperature. I so it thought you were sexy. saying was it attractive. Um, was it green sexy is such a you know, you know green kind is of such liked a it. pretty color. Um the uniforms equipped the the um the stuff they gave us was great. So it was very windy out there. There's a lot of seasons out there, it's very windy out there, very cold out there, very hot out there. And mm-hmm. so you're having to wear certain things for all of that. So you got a lot of layers if it's cold, and then you need things that are sort of airy when it's hot. But you also are constantly running through thorn bushes, like Everything in the desert has thorns. Um, then you got cactus and you got uh, choyas and things like that that just attach to you. Scorpions, snakes, yeah. um, spiders, Tarantulas. all sorts of things. Yeah. So the the our uniform was green. So you had the blue uniforms and the green uniforms. Blue is your CBP. They're at the border uh, ports of entry, the POEs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have. Uh, Border Patrol, who uh, does everything in between the POEs and 25 miles into the interior, except for in Tucson sector, is 75 miles. So that's where we patrol. Um, we're in green uniforms, and I think our job is a lot of fun just mm-hmm. because we're out in the woods. We're, mm-hmm. you know, not everything, something's happening every day, you know, and, and a lot of times, sometimes we're saving lives. They're literally saving people's lives. Mm-hmm. I've sat in the hospital many times with people that had, um, were, Two seconds away from getting her foot cut off because it was they were so cold, you know. And, oh my, oh my and gosh! So frostbite was so bad; their foot was black. You it know? was that oh cold. Gosh. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially in the mountains. I mean, we're talking five thousand to ten thousand feet above sea level. So it wasn't hot. Um, my All area, we were blessing. My area is uh, it was uh, it would typically be ten to twenty degrees cooler because we were higher elevation. Um, but outside of that area, sort of like in the other desert areas, I mean, it would be 120 degrees. It wow. could be super hot. So, wow. so I was blessed. Well, we would get up into hundreds rarely, but usually it was like 90 something. But it's a dry heat, so you got to be careful with that. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Did you get to have a cell phone? It didn't matter if you had you had one, but it didn't work. There's no service. Our radios had problems. I wow. We were tracking a group, and my partner was five feet away from me and he couldn't communicate with me. We were buried down in the grass. We couldn't talk because we didn't know how close the group was. Mm-hmm. The cameraman three miles away was communicating to him and communicating to me. We oh couldn't my. talk. We couldn't wow. talk because the radios weren't working. That's crazy. The radio huh. reception's terrible. And that's that's a dangerous factor. I didn't even factor. think about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So all right. Well, any other questions about that? No, I think I'm good. That's ex- that. I just ugh, snakes, the animals. <laughs> nah. Out of the three Rattle jobs that we talked about, you've probably had more than that. Obviously. Oh gosh. What's yes. been your favorite? Um, are we adding in the the barista thing? Yeah, like okay. coffee shop owner. Um, I love what I do now. Okay. I don't want to do anything else. You know, I love what I'm doing. Uh, I love being a pastor, but that's not something I have to do in a church. Mm-hmm. Um, Board Patrol was probably the most fun and most adventurous, mm-hmm. uh, but it was also gave me the most anxiety. Yeah. Um, cheerleading was a lot of fun, but I just like coaching in general. So like mm-hmm. right now I still coach football. And so yeah. I just got a coaching. I'm going to coach hard. So, um, but I did just get sort of tired of running my own business and just being involved in all. It's mm-hmm. very dramatic. It's mm-hmm. very... Uh, what do you call it? Um, when you're uh, reputation driven, gotcha. in a way that's yeah. not healthy, right? So it's, it's like it's business mixing with your personal life, yeah. And, and stuff. It's, it's very hard to keep people committed mm-hmm. yeah. to even the best gyms have a lot of turnover because people want to top here, here, here. You got kids that started at five years old, they're, they're like 20 time national champions because they go to so many national mm-hmm. cha- championships in a year. Gotcha. Going in, and they've been doing it since they were five, and it's like, it's like it's sort of, I don't know, it's it just get burned out. Kids right. get burned out. Parents get burned out. Okay. So. Um. Well, what's the most basic thing about you? See, I'm not very good at defining basic. <laughs> I mean, like the coffee drinker is pretty basic. I am a I am a basic coffee drinker. I like black coffee and espresso. Yeah. Do you I, watch the Kardashians? Oh goodness, no! <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't watch them either. I, no. I I struggle with reality TV. There's only two reality shows I, I really what watch. What are they? 
uh, Duck Dynasty and Wahlburgers. You know, I got to meet Jace Robinson a couple oh, weeks hush. ago. Yes. Oh, are you serious? A yes. Weeks ago? Yeah, he was really, really funny. That's crazy. Yeah, and he spoke at my husband's work event. My husband goes really? to a Christian, works for a Christian right. company, but right. like, there's 50 employees, so you That's wouldn't think it would right. be. Um, but he like spoke for like an hour and it was like very, very God driven That's awesome. and it was really cool. Yeah. And then like afterwards at the after party, it was so mellow. Like usually people get toasted because right. they have open bars and stuff uh-huh. and like nobody really no, got I, toasted. I, I, I was no. like, well, you guys are listening to <laughs> yeah. Jesus today. <laughs> That's <laughs> so funny. But yeah, That's he awesome. was so nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, well, you know that to finish off the episode, we read a misconnection from Craigslist. Uh, absolutely. I'm an avid follower of y'all's podcast. <laughs> um, so will you do the honors of reading it? Oh, goodness. <laughs> there's, no, there's no customers in it. <laughs> oh, wow. So I'm just reading this right here? Yeah. All right. You have to read the title. All right. Red and black... <laughs> <laughs> Red and black fishnets at rest area and 70. And do I read that right there? Um, then you just read this little paragraph. I was at the rest area west of Plainfield and made it all the way to Cloverdale. I was wearing wife's red stockings (laughs) and black fishnets with a black dress. Not sure who reads these, but I'll be heading back to Indy soon and I have some cute outfits I'd like to show you. Wow. Interesting. Threw me when it said wife's red stockings. I was not expecting that. I know. All right. I did not know about that one. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. So. Misconnection. Those who are interested. Look it up. Yeah, where's that at in Plainfield? So. I think so. Yeah, go up to Plainfield if you like that, I guess. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Well, do you want to plug Dry Bones or your Instagram or anything? So, Dry Bones Mud House, that's our Instagram as well. And we will be reopening August 2nd. And hopefully, we'll be serving our own beans. So, we'll be roasting our own beans. Come in. It's at the Union 525. Uh, that's 525 Meridian Street, downtown. We are just a couple blocks east of Lucas Oil Stadium, just to sort of give you a reference. And we also are the only coffee shop in the Midwest and maybe even the country that has non-water slides and the tallest rumored non-water slide in the state of Indiana. Yeah. So Interesting. you have to come check it out. Yeah. We have uh, pictures on our Instagram and okay. on our should be on our website, I think, but the website's going to get revamped. So and you said the Instagram it? name? Did you? Instagram Dry Bones Mud House, okay. all one word. Got okay. the logo there. So we do have a whole seventy followers. So hey, <laughs> seventy is a great start. <laughs> Spread the word. Yes. Well, thank you for coming on. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. Me. This that was, was fun. fun. Yes, yeah. you're our first it. guest. So thank you. We're going to go. <laughs> Basic bee history. Remember that first guest, Danny? Yeah. yeah. With the beard? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, we'll see you next week, yep. bees. Bye, bees. See ya. Hey, it's Becca. Hey, it's Maddie. Thank you so much for listening to the Basic Bee Podcast. Follow us on the gram at Basic Bee Pod. And join our private Facebook group linked in the episode notes. Be sure to catch our next episode and leave us a nice review. Until then, stay basic. Bye, bees. Thank you.